Hey guys, what's up? It's Nate. Um, wanted to do a quick video and touch base on something that I've been seeing a lot and really been working with a lot from a development standpoint. And that is the topic of uh, device IDs or location based um, targeting, right? There's a lot of mystery, a lot of um, voodoo or big brother theories out there. And I just wanted to kind of give people a recap. A, a quick maybe 10,000 foot view of how the information is collected uh, in the application and these data um, aggregators and then how it's actually being used. So to start, um, high level, there are companies out there, data aggregators, right, location-based uh, targeting companies that work with apps, right, the apps that are installed on your iPhone or your Android device and what they're doing is they're passing uh, data from really from your phone through the app that's installed on your phone to these aggregators, right? And then what the aggregators are doing is they're working with a lot of time agencies, advertising agencies, to take that data and sell it for the use of marketing, right? So that's how you can get some of these ads based on either places you've been or areas um, that you live. So how that's done is a lot of these free applications that you see on your phone that you have installed, that I have installed, that um, you know my friends and family have installed, a lot of these free apps, the way that they're generating revenue is by um, making deals with these data aggregators to install uh, the aggregator's SDK. So what an SDK is, is basically a software development kit, right? It's basically a plug-in to the app. So the application <clears throat> really is um, performing whatever it's, whatever it's used for. Let's say it's a coupon application, right? So while you're using that coupon application, let's say you're searching for a great deal or, or a coupon you know, at a local store. What the application is doing is based on whatever the parameters are, it's sending your location and some other basic information, typically uh, the type of device, um, the time, and then your, uh, your position. So typically that's done as a, a latitude and a longitude, so it's a coordinate. So they're sending, that app is sending your location and the time and your device information to the aggregator. So not that every application is the same, but let's say every time you open the app um, and the app uh, basically connects or refreshes, it sends off your location. So let's say you open that coupon app five times a day, you might have sent your location five times to that aggregator. Now, what that aggregator does is it's collecting information from hundreds if not thousands of apps and it puts it all together and then once it puts it all together it can start to do some um, some analytics and, and a little bit of a little bit of, of value add to say okay well now I have all these points big deal what what does that matter well let's say you open that coupon app uh, while you're at Publix or while you're at Target what they can do is they know where Target's location is, right? So they basically set up a, a it's not really a geofence, it's really the parcel, maybe it's the building and the parking lot, it really depends on the, on the sophistication of the specific aggregator. But basically what they can do is they can intersect all the points that they get with these, what they call points of interest. So let's say it's Target and Publix, let's just use those two because because at least down here in Florida, those are really common. So what it can do is it can say, hey, now I have all this data, who goes to Target? So they can take all the points that they're getting from all these different apps, intersect them with uh, Target and Target's footprint, and what they come out with is an audience of people that go to Target. And they can do the same thing with Publix, right? So now let's say you're a brand and you're a brand you just got introduced into Target and you want to uh, 
build, let's say a Facebook audience, and you want to specifically go after people that shop at Target because your brand of popsicles is, I don't know why I picked popsicles, but your brand of popsicles is now on the shelves at Target. So you can go to this aggregator and say, hey, I want an audience for uh, Target shoppers. And they can use the fact that these applications have been sending data to, um, to, to them, and then they can take those points, intersect them with target foot, Target's footprint, build an audience, and now that brand has the ability to target people that, that shop at Target. And they can do the same thing with Publix, right? You just got introduced on new shelf space. You brought out a new item. You want to. You have a special deal going on with uh, with Publix. Now, when you go into let's say Facebook and you build your audience, you can basically upload a list of device IDs. And what the device ID is is everybody's phone. So I have a Pixel Two. So on my phone, if I go into settings and I go down to Google, there's my account, says Google account, and then below that, it says ads. And what that shows under ads is my advertiser ID. So it actually has in here your advertising ID. And what that ID corresponds to is the ID that would be loaded into, let's say, a Facebook audience. So that ID is linked directly to my phone. So if someone were to take, or let's say I did it as a test, my ID loaded into a Facebook audience and ran an ad, I would be the only one that saw it because what Facebook is doing is it's matching the people that are on its platform and their IDs with the IDs that got loaded into uh, Audience Insights, and it's going to serve ads directly to those devices and those devices only. So if you have a strong audience, right, let's say it is target shoppers or public shoppers or whatever it might be, you can limit the, the people that are seeing your ads to specifically people that qualify based on whatever your rules are, right? In this instance, we did something pretty simple um, as far as people that just show up inside of the footprint of two stores. You can get more sophisticated and you can start looking at um, some advanced uh, things like frequency or dwell time to try and understand where people live and where they work. And those are all a little bit more advanced, but for right now, what you need to know Um, is on the one side, from a brand or from an advertising standpoint, it can be incredibly powerful if used in an intelligent way. And on the data privacy side, if you wanted to, um, let's say you're a conspiracy theorist, you can actually go in and you can reset your advertising ID. So not that um, that makes it foolproof and takes you out out of the system, but it might make you feel a little bit better that at least all of your uh, traffic has not been consistently linked to one ID for, let's say, as long as you had your iPhone. So that way, anytime somebody, let's say that they are building a target audience and you are a target shopper, if you reset your advertising ID uh, every month, then the likelihood of you being targeted by a specific ad based on where you were last month is, is virtually impossible because the ID that um, the brand has now is outdated and you have a new one. So on that side of it, that is a way you can insulate yourself to a degree, but um, really from a brand and from an advertising standpoint, if you're, if you're smart about it and you're tactful about it, it can be an incredibly powerful tool to get in front of just the right people Um, that have just the right behaviors to hopefully show them something interesting and of value. So to recap, free applications installed on your phone are with your consent, because you do typically agree to the terms and conditions of those apps, sending your 
phone and location data to data aggregators for the use of um, location-based targeting. So the way that they do it, again, is typically these aggregators give developers an SDK, software development kit. That development kit basically plugs into their app and at some certain cadence, information from your phone is sent to the aggregator. So again, to insulate yourself, you can reset your advertiser ID. I know how to do it on Android devices. I don't have an iPhone right now, so I can't tell you what to do there, but I'm sure you could Google it. And I'm sure there's a way to do it um, for iPhone users as well. But that's kind of the state of the union. It's the very basic uh, explanation of how the information is collected, how it's transmitted to the aggregators, and what they are typically doing at the most basic level. In some videos to follow, we'll get into more advanced analytical approaches to um, leveraging that targeting data to do some interesting things like frequency analysis and um, dwell time analysis to understand things like where you live and where you work. So stay tuned for more videos and we'll catch you guys next time. Peace.